morning. Dr. Good morning. Can you hear? Good morning. Can you hear us? We can hear loud and clear. Perfect. Wonderful. Yeah. So um, I'm here with uh, Dr. Bransan, uh, our one of our vascular surgeons. We do all the stent grafts and uh, aneurysmatic disease, thoracic disease together. We also have a guest as a guest, Dr. Kratimenos here from Athens, um, from the Ephelengist uh, Mos Hospital. Thank you very much. Yeah, vascular surgeon and Dr. Otto from anesthesiology is also helping us here in this case. Uh, maybe Daniela, you can introduce the case. Um, yes. Yeah, so so um, please, uh, you can have the slides now. So we have uh, um, here on the table a 64-year-old uh, uh, male patient. This patient uh, was admitted to our hospital approximately six uh, weeks ago with a uh, acute uh, asymptomatic type B aortic dissection. Um, since then, the patient had intermittent thoracic pain. We have performed a follow-up CT approximately uh, four weeks later, and we have uh, noticed an increase of the uh, aortic dissection diameter of approximately five uh, millimeter. At this point, we have decided to treat the patient endovascularly. Uh, but because of the length of the treating um, aorta, we have planned to treat the complexic, uh, complete thoracic aorta. Uh, we were concerned about the uh, spinal cord ischemia. Uh, that's why we um, have decided to uh, treat this patient in a stage manner. And for staging, we have decided to coil the segmental arteries. We have uh, already um, coil the 13 segmental arteries between um, or the level of TH7 down to the TH12 um, and uh, we have performed that in um, three sessions and we have performed like four segmental arteries per session, the last session five. And uh, Andre will um, show uh, you shortly how do we, we perform the, um, the coiling yeah. of the segmental arteries. Uh, maybe if I can go to the next uh, here. Yeah, so this is uh, how it looks like after three sessions of coiling, um, always a week in between. Uh, currently, this is uh, the minimum which we want to see between those sessions to really avoid any problems here in terms of spinal ischemia. Uh, you can see that um, this is actually a three axial uh, yeah, system method which we are using. So this is a six French actually EMA guiding catheter, which we usually use for renal artery stenting. And uh, we take just the five French uh, um, sauce, no, or sauce or sidewinder one catheter in. And the nice thing is uh, that uh, with this um, outer uh, catheter, you can change the angle here of the uh, sidewinder one catheter. So if the art is a little bigger, uh, then you can easily reach here uh, with the tip of the catheter here. Uh, with moving here these uh, catheters in between uh, to the aortic wall. So we found it very helpful, very successful. And then there is a small uh, coiling catheter going in for the coil deployment. Okay, I think we can go with, uh, on with the slides here. Yeah, yeah, uh, Andre, you have some, um, Andre, can yeah. you hear me? Uh, this is Pier Giorgio Cao. I have the first question. You, do, uh, you perform this embolization routinely when you cover the distal the total uh, length of thoracic aorta or just uh, uh, in a case yes. cases? Yes, it has become our routine actually because of the fear of spinal ischemia in all thoracoabdominal aneurysms where we cover uh, this um, crucial area. We actually, if we have time, uh, do this. Of course, emergency cases not, but otherwise if we have time, wait for a custom-made graph, for example, um, we, we do this. And what time interval do you recommend between the sessions? Well, no one really knows. And when we were starting, we actually took several weeks in between and uh, the distance became shorter and shorter. And here in this case, for example, it was just one week. Um, of course, I mean, we, we don't know what the best uh, um, length of uh, yeah, duration is between those calling uh, sessions uh, from animal models. Uh, we know that maybe a week is uh, something where collaterals develop, uh, but um, we also need more experience. So far we have done 41 or you know better. Yeah, so, uh, so far we have tr completely treated about 32 patients with rock abdominal aortic aneurysm. That means co um, the coiling session completed and the exclusion of aneurysm. Um, and s most of them were type two and type three aneurysm. And so far we have not encountered any um, ischemic spinal cord um, injuries. 
um, of course, um, as, as Andre said, it's, um, it's very um, um, important to, to look at the uh, segmental arteries before you plan your aortic procedure. And our goal is to, to coil uh, completely the um, stented um, aorta that will be covered by the stent graft. It's, it takes sometimes up to, to three sessions, but in some patients, um, some segmental arteries are, um, are occluded. We already have encountered patients where all the segmental arteries in the stented area or an aortic um, area planned to be stented uh, were all complete or occluded. So um, it it's depends on the patient's anatomy a lot. Yeah, Andre. Of course, uh, the emergency cases, uh, it's, um, we cannot treat like that. Uh, Andre, it's Frank Veith. Uh, you don't use spinal drainage in these cases, and I guess you're following the work of Etz and Greep uh, in uh, occluding these vessels. Is that correct? Yeah, we work together with, with uh, Professor Etz at the Heart Center here in, in Leipzig. Um, so currently, however, we have done here the, the biggest series. So actually, we have uh, coiled 41 patients, and 32 are now treated also with the graft. So far, in 41 patients, we didn't have any, any and, problems. And no so spinal okay. drainage in these cases? Well, we do spinal drainage. Uh, actually, this acute. is reserved for those cases, yeah, the acute cases. And uh, of course, if, if something happens despite uh, anything we do be before, uh, then we would do spinal drainage. For the moment, our, our um, monitoring, it's based on um, near red infra infrared spectroscopy, so NIRS. Um, this, also pa this patient is also monitored. He has two electrodes on the upper lumbar area. So we have um, we've done that in cooperation with Heart Center. And um, so far in our um, endovascular cases and also in the surgical cases, after coiling and sanding, we have not um, noticed uh, too much um, uh, movement in the saturation in the nearest um, near uh, measurement. Fine, maybe we can go continue with the CT. Um. Yeah, so here you can have um, the, um, the f uh, live uh, CT scan running. Uh, you can see here the, uh, the supraaortic vessel. You can see here the... Uh, Please go down. You can see some intramural hematoma. You, we, have measure, we have planned to... St here you can see the um, uh, dissection. Further down, um, this area increased up to 30. It, when the patient presented, it was about 3 centimeters in diameter. Now it has approximately 36 um, uh, millimeter in diameter. Go down, please. You can see a big entry of dissection, but you have not noticed any re-entry. So it's like a bland sac. And you go, if you go further down, further down, please, you can see another big entry, uh, again, uh, without a an, uh, an re-entry. And um, this pathology, the distal dissection, it's very close to the um, celiac trunk. So um, when we have uh, seen the CT, we have uh, decided together to uh, completely stand the, uh, the um, thoracic aorta beginning from the uh, left subclavian down to the celiac trunk. Yeah. Fine. Let's uh, go to the next uh, slide, please. Um, yeah. So maybe, Dr. Katomiros, so maybe you yeah, can... Uh, some, uh, thank you very much, Andre. There are some characteristics of the uh, stand graph and current stand graph. Uh, you can see that uh, there is a EPTF embedded not search or cover of the graft. Of course, there are nitinol self-expanding uh, springs inside. There is a hydrophilic coating sheath, and which is kinking resistant. A tip capture system for the appropriate release uh, of the graft. It's a quite low profile delivery system because it goes from 21 to 23 friends. And there is a large catalog for sizing uh, for choice on demand. You can see here that uh, there are various lengths that goes for 40 millimeters to 200 millimeters and uh, various diameters that goes from uh, 26 to 46 millimeters. And uh, these are the main uh, technical characteristics of the stent graft. And uh, if we can uh, move to the next uh, slide, I would only uh, add that there are, of course, bell springs in the proximal part of the graft. And there are two uh, radio pack uh, markers, one eight uh, shape that has to be on the external uh, uh, aortic curvature placed there, and a zero marker that has to be in the lesser uh, aortic uh, curvature. There is also a connecting bar 
and uh, a V-shaped uh, marker in the distal part of the graft. So Fine. we can uh, go on. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, if we can switch to the screen now, to the Angio screen, uh, to show what we have done so far. Um, just a moment. Okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah, first, uh, of course, uh, puncture, right drawing to take it in here. First puncture for our sense, a little bit too high puncture, so uh, we repunctured here and closed uh, this first puncture again, so a little lower here into the lower third um, of the uh, common femoral artery. We preloaded uh, two prograts on the right side. Uh, we also have done, once again, an IVIS measurement uh, to exclude any further di dilation of the aorta so that, uh, according to the CT, we are not choosing now the wrong graft. Uh, however, that confirmed our measurements, and we are going to take a 34 to um, 30 tapered 160 centimeter long um, um, uh, millimeter long uh, uh, graph first in, and then uh, take it, we want to uh, take another 200 uh, by 32 cylindric graft in. Yeah, so here once again you see all these coilings, uh, the wire. Uh, we also have a pacemaker to do rapid pacing here once we deploy the graft. And we are actually just about to, to take it in. So here you have again the Ankura graft live, um, and we are planning to introduce now the graft via the right um, groin. We have already pre dilated with the 16th French um, sheath. Yeah. Well, maybe Dr. Katimedos, uh, you can a little bit talk about your experience with. Yes, we have some experience with this uh, device. Uh, the last uh, two years we have uh, implanted uh, in this device in 47 patients. Of course, we started with easy cases in the very beginning. But uh, the last year we have uh, used it for all kinds of pathologies of uh, descending thoracic aorta. And uh, I can give you a positive, very positive feedback, uh, both for uh, intraoperative uh, performance of the device and uh, also uh, we have very good uh, follow-up results, uh, 30 days follow-up results that are very good uh, in all patients, six months results in uh, the majority of the patients, and we have a few patients with one year follow-up. Can you, can you remind uh, us uh, what's the French size of this device now in this case? The device that we uh, are going to implant now is a 3430 tapered device. And the, the uh, diameter of the sheath is 23 uh, French outer, outer diameter. Yeah. yeah, but they will downsize. Uh, yes, there is a uh, new generation coming up uh, and um, it's going to be, they're going to downsize the um, yeah. profile of the graft. Yeah. So you see uh, here at the tip of the graft, um, there are two markers, it's an eight. Uh, on your right side and an O on the left side. So there's a, a, a stabilization suture or, or, or strut on the outer curvature. So the eight should be outside and actually uh, at the end appear uh, not as an eight, but here as uh, just a line, a long line. And this is uh, how uh, it should then be here deployed. Uh, so I think I have to go a little higher like this. We haven't done an angio yet, probably like this here. Yeah, the deployment system is similar to what we know from other standard graphs so far. I think uh, we can do here now an angio. I think the uh, yeah the position is really quite nice with the with the with the line here at the outer curvature. And we have a left oblique angulation of 60, 61. That's, I think, appropriate here. Okay, uh, it's gekoppelt. It's gekoppelt. Then I'm going to bitte. Just a moment. What guide wire are you using? Uh, this is a Landerquist, extra stiff, 260 centimeter long. Yeah, I think this is a very good position. We actually do not have, we have a little bit of a landing zone here actually to the subclavian artery. Uh, the first end um, entry is actually a little further down, so this should be a very good position okay, so here. What's what, what um, the, the real uh, neck length uh, before the, uh, the, the tier, the entry tier? Yeah, like it's in fact three centimeters, but there's already some intramural hematoma, of course, reaching yeah, actually up to the subclavian artery, but not around the subclavian artery. So therefore, I think this is uh, a very good position here. 
And we're going to do this here with uh, rapid pacing. However, let me first uh, take the ring here a little further down here uh, until the ring is maybe... Uh, pigtail is coming a little bit down here, like this yeah. here. Andre, are, are, you yeah. are you concerned that the bare struts of this stent uh, may fall into the subclavian, kind of? Uh, could that happen? Yeah, it could happen. Uh, would you try to avoid this? I mean, they're short and... Um, uh, is it a concern for you? They're a little bit coated by PTFE, so they do not have hooks, and therefore I think they're relatively benign, or is it a concern for you? It looks ugly. I, have, I haven't seen a complication. Uh, yeah. Yes, it looks ugly, but also, yeah, exactly. Okay, I think we are just about to start here now. I think we should start here now the rapid pacing, please. So the pressure drops now to... So the rapid pacing is now on. Very low. And uh, noch mal apnoe, bitte. Yeah. I do another shot here. Okay, I think I can also go a little bit back here. Yeah, like this here, maybe. And I do the rest a little bit of fast release. Okay. okay. Pacing and is off. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. It's um, on? Yeah. <laughs> now now you can off. take it off. <laughs> Because uh, first I had to release, of course, uh, the proximal no, strut. It landed beautifully. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, yes. You hold the wire, please, yeah. Daniela. Uh, the wire. Can you hold the wire? The pigtail. So we take the end the wire a little higher. Your right hand permanently. Okay. Yeah, it looks I think very good. Uh, we will. Reposition the uh, pigtail. Actually, I think uh, we do not have to do an angu now because I'm pretty sure it's right where we want to have it. Well, uh, we will now prepare the second graft um, that will take us some minutes. Uh, we will take the pigtail gown, mark the celiac trunk. I'm not sure about uh, your plans well, or how many. Let's, let's do a talk while you do that. Yeah, yeah, we have done the case, so uh, we are um, ready with the case. Um, so if you see the angu. Uh, after the first deployment, this is a 32, 32, 200, um, and we did a right oblique view to see the celiac trunk. We actually have one, two, three centimeters to land down to the celiac trunk, or one, two, or two centimeters. So we actually, if we have to be very precise, we may take a recurved catheter into the trunk to be extremely precise. However, here we did a shot over the pigtail catheter. You can see the uh, graft is nearly completely open, the last shot here. And then we deployed the full graft here, yeah, as any other graft. And uh, this is the angio after that, looks very nice. And uh, as you said, these <laughs> struts which look into the septlavian artery, uh, they do not look very nice. But uh, so far, we didn't have seen any problem, Dr. Me, me, me neither. I, I wouldn't be worried about that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so it looks very nice. Uh, here, we can't see the uh, dissection anymore. Sorry, and also not distally. Well, the apnea was not the best here, but um, all fine, celiac trunk open. And we also checked, of course, since we have the IVAS on the table, whether there's any problem. So we ruled out a type A dissection, uh, which uh, rarely occurs. Uh, we have closed the groins. If the camera can look to the, to the um, uh, groin here. So, um, 23 French, but uh, with two proglides, um, actually no problem. Yeah, we are quite happy with the results. And do we have any comments from the panelists? It looks beautiful to me. Anybody wants to comment? Good job. Good job is the verdict from the room. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.